The father of a little girl allegedly kidnapped and killed by a package delivery driver is now suing the suspect and FedEx. Athena Strand's dad says FedEx, as well as the contracting company that hired Tanner Lynn Horner, were negligent and failed to supervise Horner. Horner told police that he was delivering a package to Strand's home when he accidentally reversed the truck into the seven-year-old. Horner says even though he wasn't, she wasn't seriously injured, he panicked and put Athena in his truck and eventually strangled her. The complaint alleges that FedEx and the contracting company failed to investigate Horner's criminal history, mental health history, and prior employment. Jacob Strand's lawsuit is seeking more than $1 million in damages along with a jury trial. Terry, you're a, you were a civil trial attorney. What do you think of the case? Is it FedEx at fault here? Oh, yeah, I definitely think they may be at fault here. Anytime you have an employee, a subcontractor, or even an independent contractor, if they're involved in an incident like this, the victim or the victim's family, they can claim negligent hiring, negligent training, or negligent supervision. And that's because every employer has a duty to ensure a safe environment for its employees and even its customers. So, of course, the incident has to occur during the scope and course of the employment. If it's outside of that, then obviously there's no responsibility as far as the employer is concerned. But to prove the case, you have to say that the individual was driving a company vehicle or delivering a package at the time, and that does seem to be the case here. And as you said, based on that complaint, they're alleging that both FedEx and the subcontractor, they failed to investigate him. And if he had a background that was violent, then he should not have been hired. Brian, what do you think? You think the Strand family has a strong chance of winning their suit? I want them to win, but I don't think it's going to be that easy. Texas has very strong third-party liability where they're not liable for the overt criminal acts of a third party. Now, if he had just hit Athena and then walked off, they might have been liable for that, but they're not liable for that overt criminal act of kidnapping and then killing her. So that's going to be difficult for them. And even if they do sue, I think FedEx is going to point the finger at the subcontractor, Big Top Spin Inc., and try to get the money out of them. I think FedEx may be able to dodge and weave away from liability, but at the end of the day, I do think Athena Strand's family will win because you don't want to be seen as the large company who then ends up indirectly even killing this young girl and then dodging any kind of uh, accountability. Yeah, you might be right. I, I don't know if they're going to win or not, but I tell you, I'm not surprised uh, that they brought this lawsuit. Not at all. Not shocked by that. It's completely understandable. Well, we do have several updates on cases that we've been following closely for you. First, the parents charged with involuntary manslaughter after their son shut up a school are facing quite an uphill battle when it comes to getting bond. Jennifer and James Crumbly are the parents of the Oxford school shooter who killed four students last year. Now, he pleaded guilty. The parents are trying to get bond and provided the name of a person that they could stay with if they were released, but the court did a background check and found that that person has quite a checkered past. So right now, an appeals court is set to determine if the couple can get bail or not. The prosecution says the Crumbleys knew their son had mental health issues, but not only ignored them, but bought him a gun. The oldest daughter of the late basketball star Kobe Bryant has been granted a restraining order. Natalia Bryant testified about Dwayne Kemp in court on Wednesday. She already had a temporary order against him, but now that protective order will last at least three years, and Kemp has to surrender any weapons that he owns. Bryant says Kemp started contact her when she was 17 and believes the two are in a relationship, even though Bryant has never met him. In just a few short weeks, Todd and Julie Chrisley will have to report to federal prison. The reality star couple, known for the show Chrisley Knows Best, will serve their sentences for fraud at separate prisons in Florida. A federal judge sentenced Todd Chrisley to 12 years in prison and his wife Julie to seven years. The couple were found guilty of conspiring to defraud banks and the IRS out of millions of dollars. The two are appealing their convictions. While well, jurors in the Harvey Weinstein trial will soon enter their ninth day of deliberation. Does the long discussion hint at which way the jury is leaning? We're going to analyze the situation when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. It's been two weeks since jurors started deliberating in the sexual assault trial of Harvey Weinstein and still no verdict out of Los Angeles. The disgraced Hollywood mogul sits behind bars as he faces a possible life sentence on seven sexual assault, char assault charges. 
The charges stemmed from four different women, all of whom took the stand for the prosecution. Weinstein himself didn't testify in his own defense, but his team says that the accuser's stories are fabricated. It raised suspicion that the jury didn't ask any questions during the first part of deliberations, but it turns out that they were hidden from the public. You see, Judge Lisa Lynch has been taking jury questions over the phone in closed court, and journalists at the courthouse weren't too happy. According to court minutes, the first question on December 6th asked for a readback of testimony. Another question asked on December 9th wasn't disclosed. The jury is going to return on Monday to continue deliberations and hear more readbacks of testimony. Brian, if the judge doesn't show the journalists the notes, does that mean that we're never going to know what the jury was asked? Never is probably a strong word to use. You're probably just not going to hear it until the case is done with and maybe they're on appeal. Of course, the court record is a part of the public distribution of information and what happens with those notes, just like evidence, just like video, just like testimony, it gets added to the court record and the court files. So there could be a FOIL request, they can be um, maybe just reporters who ask to see the court file and have it copied depending on how the clerk is feeling that day. I don't think the answer is never, but I just think it's not going to happen at a time that we want it, and it's not going to happen before we learn about the verdict. Or once they reach a verdict as a mistrial, they might just decide to do interviews. Maybe they'll do an interview with Law and Crime and tell us what was happening behind the scenes. But Terry, before we get to that, the jury, they're still deliberating. Too late to reach a plea deal? Jesse, it is never, ever too late to, <laughs> to plea deal. You know, 90% of the cases are pled out, and frankly, you can make a deal at arraignment when you first come to court or you can make a deal anytime before the verdict and the judge will have to accept that you know you can ask the prosecution or the prosecution can approach you you talk to the judge and the judge will decide whether or not this is a deal that he thinks is good and in the interest of the public and you know they can in fact even reach a deal after the verdict if in fact the defendant appeals. The prosecution may want to look at that and take their chances to determine whether or not this is a merit or meritless appeal. And if they think that there's some merit to the appeal, they can even then reach some sort of agreement. And all of this is because, you know, there's a backlog in cases and COVID-19 did not help. So it is in the best interest of everybody, the judge, the prosecution, the defendant, if in fact they can reach something that's reasonable, yeah. something that's good for the public, then they'll try to do that. And looking at Harvey Weinstein, I can't tell all this time if it benefits him or not. I think if the jury came back in 10 minutes, it probably wouldn't have been good for him. This, not so sure. We don't know what's happening. Brian, Terry, thanks so much. Everyone out there, thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime Daily. We will see you next time as we discuss justice in America.